Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a mystery horror film, Darkness Falls. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with the narrator telling the story of an elderly widow who lived in the middle of the 19th century in a town called Darkness Falls. She was adored by the children and would give them coins whenever they lost a tooth, earning her the nickname, the Tooth Fairy. All seemed to be going well when a fire broke out in her house one night, leaving her face completely disfigured and had person-sensitive to light. She wore a porcelain mask after this incident and would only go out at night. But that's not the worst part yet. When two children didn't come home one day, the townspeople blamed her for the kids missing. They tore her mask off and exposed her skin to light before hanging her to death. But with her dying breath, the widow laid a curse upon Darkness Falls. The following day, the two children returned home unharmed, so the townspeople quickly buried their secret along with her body. Since then, people have believed that the Tooth Fairy visited the children of the town Darkness Falls on the night they lost their last tooth and fulfilled her curse by seeking vengeance upon those who lay their eyes on her face. For more than a century, the story of the Tooth Fairy has become a legend. The scene then changes to the present with an antisocial teenage boy, Kyle, losing his last baby tooth in a school bathroom. Later that night, his childhood best friend, Caitlin, sneaks in through his windows. While talking to her, his mouth bleeds again from losing his last tooth. Before she leaves, Kyle gets brave and asks Caitlin to be his date tomorrow at the school dance. Before he can finish his sentence, Caitlin cuts him off, informing him that she has already told her mother that he will be at their house by seven. Caitlin initiates their first pet kiss and reminds Kyle not to peek when the tooth fairy comes at night. Hours later, Kyle wakes up from a nightmare and quickly senses the Tooth Fairy's presence in his room after hearing her faint growls. Realizing the legend's true, Kyle shines a flashlight on her face when he peeks. Kyle's mother wakes up from his screams, goes to search for him, and finds him in their brightly lit bathroom. He frantically tells her that the Tooth Fairy is there. So his mother goes to his room to prove that there's nobody in the house. But she gets attacked when she sees the Tooth Fairy hiding in the dark. Kyle quickly returns to the bathroom and waits until the morning, frustrating the Tooth Fairy. The following day, the police arrive at their home to take her mother, while Kyle is moved to a psychiatric institution after the speculation that he killed his mother. Since then, Kyle has never returned to the town of Darkness Falls. Twelve years later, Caitlin contacts Kyle after her younger brother Michael is hospitalized after being unable to sleep for even ten minutes for the last few weeks. Caitlin asked him how he got over the Tooth Fairy, but the thing is, he never got over her. He has dozens of flashlights, sketches of the Tooth Fairy, and numerous medications for anxiety, depression, and sleep disorders. Later that day, Kyle visits Michael in the hospital, who knows that Kyle still has extreme paranoia and fear of the dark after seeing the Tooth Fairy. Kyle tries to comfort him that Caitlin will never let anything happen to him. However, even Michael knows that the Tooth Fairy can't be stopped. Just then, Caitlin appears and shows him Michael's sketches of the Tooth Fairy. Kyle knows that Michael saw the Tooth Fairy, and now she's haunting him. However, Caitlin refuses to accept that as a plausible explanation because the Tooth Fairy is a legend story. For her, it was just a story that was used to scare them as kids, prompting Kyle to decide to leave. However, a childhood friend, Larry, recognizes him and takes him to a bar, while Caitlin stays at the hospital for her brother. Even when he's sitting, the townspeople quickly recognizes him. Although anxious about the absence of light on some parts of the bar, Kyle catches up with Larry. He shares that he's in the gaming industry, while Larry becomes a defense attorney. Kyle informs Larry that he returned, hoping to help Michael. But Larry knows he can't help anybody with his state. Their conversation gets interrupted when an arrogant and drunken townsperson named Mr. Vodka appears and taunts Kyle and forces him to get in a fight. However, Kyle doesn't give him the satisfaction and leaves in silence. Mr. Vodka follows him and charges him from behind. This causes them to fall, and they end up in the woods, where Kyle finally gets physical after hearing the Tooth Fairy around the area. After throwing punches at his face, Kyle takes his flashlights and starts walking away, while Mr. Vodka continues to threaten him. His threats turn into screams of terror when the Tooth Fairy attacks him, and soon that night, the town performs a search for him, led by the detective. While searching in the dark woods, Mr. Vodka's dead body falls upon Larry, who screams in terror because of the cold but vodka-smelly corpse lying upon him. Meanwhile, Kyle returns to the hospital with bruises and minor cuts from falling into the woods. While aiding him, Caitlin asked him to share what happened to him in the last years. Kyle shares that after his mother's death, he was sent to a foster home, and they went to Las Vegas, where he now works in a casino. 
After that, he warns Caitlin not to let the doctors conduct any more tests on Michael, because it will never resolve what he's going through. Right then, Kyle gets arrested and is taken to police custody, accused of Mr. Vodka's death. The police confiscate his medications and his duffel bag, full of flashlights. Caitlin tries to convince the detective that Kyle's innocent, but he replies that Kyle was in a mental hospital for nine years. Caitlin's words are not enough to convince the townspeople that Kyle is innocent. Caitlin returns to the hospital, where she knocks down the bathroom door, after hearing the nurse calling out to Michael inside. She finds her brother in the bathtub, hiding in the corner, while blood runs down his left arm. Caitlin breaks down into tears, as she holds Michael in her arms. The following day, the doctor in charge updates Caitlin about her brother's case. He believes that Michael is suffering from highly specialized night terrors, and due to a constant lack of sleep, he suffered a psychotic break. Because of this, Michael cannot distinguish his reality from his dreams, and his self-inflicted wounds are consistent with his fantasy that someone will kill him. The doctor suggests putting Michael in a sensory deprivation chamber, where he will face his fear of the darkness, to which Caitlin reluctantly agrees. Meanwhile, Larry bails Kyle out of jail, and as soon as he's out, Kyle buys dozens of flashlights and secretly purchases a pistol. After that, he orders Larry to take him to the hospital before the sun goes down. But on the way, Larry changes the route. Larry refuses to turn the car around, so Kyle resorts to threatening him with the pistol. But then the Tooth Fairy attacks their vehicle, causing them to crash onto a tree. Kyle is thrown out of the car, while the Tooth Fairy takes Larry from the ground. Kyle cannot do anything as he listens to Larry's screams of terror and watches as the Tooth Fairy drops his body before dragging him away. Kyle immediately returns to the car, puts a kerosene lamp beside him, and drives back to the hospital. On the way, Kyle uses Larry's phone to contact the hospital, but the nurse refuses to let him talk to Caitlin because she's occupied with Michael's preparation for the sensory deprivation chamber. As soon as the phone call ends, the nurse contacts the police. Meanwhile, Michael watches in terror as darkness slowly envelopes his body. Fortunately, Kyle comes in just in time and tells Caitlin to stop the treatment. The doctor obliges Caitlin's order, saving Michael from getting killed. However, the police soon arrive and arrest Kyle again. Before he's taken away, Kyle reminds Caitlin not to put her brother in the dark. The detective instructs Kyle to contact his lawyer, but Kyle informs him that Larry has been torn to pieces at an avenue outside Darkness Falls. Kyle takes this chance and tells the detective that the legend story of the Tooth Fairy is true because he and Michael have seen her. She will not stop and continue to haunt them ever since they saw her porcelain mask. He adds that the town has recorded multiple murder cases in the last 150 years that mostly involved children. However, the detective still refuses to believe his smelly bullshit and calls him a crazy person. Suddenly, the whole town loses electricity because of the lightning storm. Fortunately, the establishments have emergency lights. The officers split up to check the station, while one is left to watch Kyle. The policeman hears the tooth fairy breathing, so he goes to check the front of the station. He refuses to listen to Kyle about taking a flashlight, so when the lightning fades, the tooth fairy attacks him. The officers down in the basement hear his scream, so they quickly return. The tooth fairy throws the officer to one of the emergency lights, breaking it, so Kyle frantically instructs the others to get a flashlight. However, they refuse to listen to him, so the tooth fairy attacks them one by one. They shoot the lights, trying to kill her, but it's her strategy. While they're shooting at her, Kyle takes the keys from the dead officer and frees himself. He quickly takes two flashlights and shines them at the Tooth Fairy, exposing her dirty body and causing her to wail in pain. After that, Kyle gives the other one to the detective, so he can return to the hospital with a backup. Meanwhile, Caitlin hears the Tooth Fairy's shrieks. She joins her brother in hiding underneath the bed. The Tooth Fairy quickly passes by in front of them before throwing the bed, prompting them to run. Michael holds the flashlight, while his sister holds him as they run. They hide in the storage room, but the Tooth Fairy still chases them, and Caitlin finally realizes that her legend is true. The Tooth Fairy charges at them, but Kyle pulls them inside the elevator and throws a colored torch at her before she can kill them. They're on the second floor when the Tooth Fairy stops the elevator, so they quickly light up another colored torch. This drives her away for a moment. So they force the doors to open, and the doctor and nurse help them get out just in time, before the Tooth Fairy destroys the elevator. After seeing the Tooth Fairy, the others finally believe in Kyle, so they follow his lead to rescue them. However, they die one by one, as the emergency lights lose power one by one, killing all the medical personnel that helped them because of the Tooth Fairy. The detective crashes his car through the hospital's windows, saving the trio, and then drives away as soon as they get in. 
On the way to the lighthouse, the trio reunites with Larry, who's mysteriously safe. However, the group gets attacked by the Tooth Fairy again, and takes Larry for good. So Caitlin quickly shines a flashlight at her. The Tooth Fairy stops chasing them because of the pain, while the group runs out of flashlights to use. Fortunately, the detective has two kerosene lanterns with him. Despite the car damage, the group arrives at the lighthouse. But the beacon won't turn off, so the detective and Kyle go down to check the gas in the generator. They leave one kerosene lamp with the siblings, while they take one with them downstairs. The detective holds the lamp, while Kyle fixes the generator. However, the detective holds the lamp too far away from him, allowing the Tooth Fairy to attack. As she takes him away, Kyle loses consciousness of the falling debris. The kerosene from the lamp drops on the floor, stained with generator gas. Meanwhile, the siblings resort to the light stick, as their kerosene lamp goes out. However, the Tooth Fairy breaks the windows, prompting them to jump. However, she takes Caitlin. But before she can kill her, Kyle regains his consciousness and throws the lamp at the Tooth Fairy. The lamp falls on the ground, causing a small fire, but they dismiss that. Kyle instructs Michael to flip the switch as they fastly lose the light. Michael reaches out his hand and flips off the switch just in time, before the Tooth Fairy touches Kyle, shining the bright light at her. The Tooth Fairy wails in pain as the bright light hits her body, causing her to vanish. Kyle goes up to help them. But then the Tooth Fairy appears again and holds his chick neck as she lifts him up in the air. Kyle breaks the light glasses and tears off her mask, seeing her grotesque and scarred face. Realizing she's now more sensitive to light without her mask, Kyle puts his right sleeve on fire and strikes her face with it. Kyle falls safely, so he quickly puts off the fire on his arm and watches as the Tooth Fairy's spirit is engulfed with flame, destroying and ending her curse. The film ends with a young boy who recently lost his last baby tooth, getting tucked in by his father. Before he sleeps, his mother gives him a goodnight kiss and swiftly replaces his tooth under his pillow with a gold coin, implying that the curse of the tooth fairy is gone. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.